I'm Tara Bradner, and this is Hopeful Hints, an infertility podcast where you will receive quick, hopeful hints to guide you through infertility. Here, you will find education, inspiration, and most importantly, find peace as you walk through this journey to fulfill your family vision. Are you struggling with understanding what you should eat, what supplements to take, or overwhelmed by what your fertility treatment protocol really means, or simply just need somebody to walk beside you while you're going through infertility, I'd like to introduce you to the Confident Fertility Academy. It is the only program out there of its kind created by a doctorate nurse practitioner. Whether you're just starting your trying to conceive journey or have failed many rounds, the Confident Fertility Academy will help you find clarity with my proven process. You will go from being overwhelmed to confident and in full control moving forward with your fertility care. Inside the Academy is a step-by-step approach to learning everything you need to know to move forward confidently when building your family. You will receive access to life time monthly coaching with me and access a educational course all of this comes with access for life head over to today's show notes to learn more about the confident fertility academy welcome to hopeful hints i'm your host dr tara bradner and i'm super excited for today's guest amy divarania of uva health we're going to share all about uva health at the end you guys you have to check this out i'm going to put links in today's show notes but for starters, welcome to the show, Amy. Thanks so much for having me. It's wonderful to be here. Can you begin by sharing with our audience your personal connection to infertility? Sure. I went through a pretty devastating journey in myself when I was trying to conceive my son. A little bit about me. I've had irregular cycles my whole life. Um, when I say irregular, I mean I might have a period every month, or I may not see ant flow for six months. Or it'll come in two weeks. So like it was completely unpredictable. Uh, but that seemed to be my normal. That being said, my husband and I kind of expected us not to get pregnant in the first shot. Uh, but we did want to pursue parenthood naturally and not put any base about. The biggest reason for that was I personally had a pretty heavy mistrust for the medical community when it came to my fertility. I was misdiagnosed with PCOS multiple times in the past, put on metformin, put on birth control clothes. And I just had horrible reactions to those. So my thought was, I don't need a clinician to tell me that I can't conceive or my body needs to do X, Y, Z to get pregnant. If it can't do it on its own, it's not for us. So I started doing everything right. I started peeing on sticks every morning. I took my temperature 4.30 a.m. every day, used every fertility trap in there. And luckily after 18 months, I did conceive my son. But those 18 months were the most devastating of my life. And the worst part was, after I collected all this data, I didn't learn anything new about my cycle. All I found out was that I had irregular cycles, and I knew that going into my journey. I also realized all the tools that I was using were really hardwired for women who had that perfect 20 to 30 day cycle, and I wanted to change this. I was like, this is not the norm anymore. Women are not getting pregnant at 20. They are getting pregnant much later in life, and that comes with irregularities. And while we call it an irregularity, it's actually normal. So I want to, I really want to normalize that aspect of the result. That is so important. There is, I know personally, a lot of patients I work with that can relate to that so strongly. So thank you for sharing that because it's not talked about enough. We are going to jump into your three hopeful hints. And then I am excited you guys stay listening because we're going to share how Uva Health can help you as a patient and if you're a healthcare provider or if you want to encourage your healthcare provider to learn more about how they can incorporate this company into their healthcare system. It's amazing. I, as a nurse practitioner, Amy and I have worked together. I've seen the backside of it. I wish I would have had this about three years ago when I got super serious about working with women's health. Hopeful fit number one. I hope women and couples start speaking out more openly about their journeys instead of silently suffering on their own. So I was incredibly fortunate that my partner was involved in our, in our journey. He cared about us. I should say that he cared, but he did. And he was very sentimental and trying to be understanding of what I was going through. I ended up internalizing a lot. 
And I found that he was kind of at a loss as to what to do. Um, he would hear me crying in the bathroom in the morning when I got a negative pregnancy test. He would hear me crying on the bed every night. But I'm like, why didn't I take those medications? Why didn't I wait so long? Basically like yelling at myself um, for completely blaming myself for the, the experience that we were having. And he didn't know what to say. And I never once told him, all. I don't need you to say anything or do anything. All I want is for you to be there. Like, touch my arm. Just hold my hand. Hug me. Like, that's it. And I don't, like, the one thing that he learned very quickly not to say to me and said, it's not your fault. Because I didn't want to hear that. <laughs> um, but I strongly encourage women and couples to communicate within themselves and then also outside. We also kept our fertility journey to ourselves. I didn't actually tell my family to be pregnant until the past first trimester because I just lived in this constant fear that like, this wasn't true. Um, and I wish I could go back and do that again. We had another guest on Hopeful Hands and she even shared like, as a spouse, this is more about miscarriage, but this would apply too to a failed monthly cycle of treatment or just another failed month where your period comes, just bring me a cup of water. And like you said, touch, just touch me, hug me. And men are such fixers. Like they want to like fix everything and have a resolution. And it's like, sometimes they need to just be reminded, just do nothing and hold me, touch me, hug me, bring me a cup of water, fill me a warm bubble bath. That was one other thing she mentioned is a nice bubble bath. So I love that. Hopeful hit number two. I kind of touched on this earlier, but I hope women experiencing infertility show themselves some grace and forgiveness. I think women are incredibly hard on themselves when they can't conceive and infertility is no one's fault. You didn't ask for it. You didn't make a bad decision in your past that you're paying for now. It's just a hurdle that we have to, all, we have to go through. And sometimes the parenthood just isn't as streamlined as others, but it's not your fault. So easy for me to say but really hard to actually follow through all that. But I hope that uh, women and couples overall just really show themselves some grace. I love that you shared that because I think if I would have heard that in the beginning, not like in the middle or closer to my end, it would have meant more. So I hope that people listening can take that right now and really start to repeat that if they have to and, and just know that this is nothing they did, you know, and to give themselves grace, like you said. Hopeful hit number three. I hope Uva empowers women with objective information so they can truly advocate for themselves and finally take control of their health and fertility. I think we're all taught that women, like we're all taught in health class, you have sex, you're going to get pregnant. Um, I would love to go back to my health teacher, shake them, be like, I'm sorry, that's not true. Like, tell me something that's real. Um, but it's, it's just what we're all taught and we're not taught the information we need to to know about our health and I feel like our fertility is just a black box. So when you're going through an infertility journey, you're forced to educate yourself. And if you're not from a science background, I like am. even for me, I didn't have the information I needed to understand ovulation and, and my menstrual cycle, what was going on. I had to teach that to myself despite my background. And for me, who's actually like in the space, I thought that was a little ridiculous, let alone a lay person who's totally untouched from the medical community having to educate themselves, that to me is ridiculous. 100%. And if you think about it, I thought you were saying that, it's very like a fear-based day at school. Like you're, if you go back to even like, was it like fifth or sixth grade where you learned about periods? You learn about period. That's it. Like, and it's like, ah, and the boys make it fun of you. And like, it's just like an awkward experience from day one. Yeah, I, I hate that. Like, I'm so glad you brought that up because I feel like the period is so stigmatized in the moment we learn about it. And like, I'm sorry, but when you're learning about a period and when you have your first one, you're not prepared. You're going to have accidents. It shouldn't be laughed at. It should be something that is understood and accepted by the community. And we should be willing to help each other. I think that's where like grace and having compassion for each other really comes through. And I mean, this can, I can sit on a soapbox for this for for days. Like it brings into bullying. It brings into like what we all consider right, what is normal. I'm sorry, but periods are normal. And if you don't have one, something's really wrong. I love that. All right, Amy, we need to hear about Uva Health. Tell us how a patient can utilize this amazing program and a healthcare provider can utilize this. Sure. So let me give you a quick overview of what the platform actually is, and then we can talk about each of those channels. So Uva is an at-home test that monitors both deep nice hormone and progesterone. 
quantitatively, meaning we give you a value for both of your hormones every day that you use an able test. It's completely personalized. So you learn what each woman's unique baseline levels are, and then we detect fluctuations in our hormones by comparing to that. So what I've had in mind as I've been developing Uva is let's build something for the irregular woman. Because to me, that is the majority of the female population. And those who have regular cycles, they have enough solutions available. So the way it works is it works alongside a smartphone app. You download the app, which you can do an extensive onboarding process. You learn a lot about your reproductive history, general wellness, overall menstrual cycle. We feed that data into our algorithm and we determine which days of your cycle you have to use an UBA test. So you're never guessing. On a testing day, you provide a urine sample on UBA. You then wait 10 minutes. There's a timer in our app. And when the timer goes off, you literally scan the test strip using the camera directly on your phone. There's a QR code on there. You align that. I told what everyone knows the QR code is. Um, we basically align that QR code and we do all the analytics directly on the phone. So you get your results in seconds. You'll know exactly where you are in your cycle. You'll get your hormone concentrations for both LH and progesterone every day. And you get a daily action plan that is customized to you. So that's the nutritional health, that's the health and emotional wellness. So you can really take control of your journey. And then at the end of your cycle, you get a really detailed report that you can share with your doctor if they're not already a Google provider. Now, everything that you provide in the app is years easy for a woman to understand, whether you're medically trained or not. It's very clear. We're also always available to answer any questions you have. But if you are working with a provider, what we've created is an entire platform where if you enter your provider's clinic ID, so we assign every provider a unique ID, you will actually be able to share all of your data with your clinician in real time. So what the provider gets to do is they get access to our HIPAA compliant dashboard. And when the woman uses Huga at home, she gets her results in the app, but you will get her quantitative results for LH and progesterone as well as anything that she's allowed in the app uh, all in real time. So you never, you don't have to deal with sample management and don't have to deal with patients coming in. This is great for both the patient and the clinic. Uh, and it's completely non-invasive and clinically tested. Now, one thing that you offer that I have become semi-obsessed with with my patients is progesterone testing. Can you share about that? Oh my gosh, this is really interesting. When we first started with that, we were going to market with the quantitative gluten and some hormone tests. And then I went into labor and we were like, all right, let's pause so that I'm sure maybe let's pause all of our efforts. But that lasted all of like a week. And my baby was so good that I was like, I need to do something. So we did a beta test and we sent 300 UVA tests to, to work. Oh, sorry, we sent a UVA test to 300 women and got their feedback. Almost every single woman told me they wanted progesterone. And I was like, well, duh, that makes sense because you want to confirm that you actually release an egg. So we went ahead and we hit the ground running. We built a quantitative progesterone test as well. And that, that has been so informative because it can actually let you know whether you've had an ovulatory or an ovulatory cycle. So if you did conceive one cycle, is it because I missed my fertile victim or is it because I didn't release an egg? And our clinicians are actually finding a lot of value in this too, because if a woman's progesterone fluctuates a lot during the luteal phase, you can actually prescribe a progesterone supplement. You could start addressing it with whatever treatment protocols you have to keep that progesterone level up to make sure that you're aligning the right stick and the best environment for an embryo. Uh, it's just been really informative for Lulio Fitz defect and so many things that we didn't even envision. I find so many patients frustrated that, well, I had an LH surge and I'm like, but let's like, they're not educated that an LH surge does not indicate you a hundred percent ovulated that month. And I have so many women too that do have progesterone um, deficiencies. And so it's just such an awesome tool that they can use at home, not invasive. We don't have to go to clinics and get blood draws and all of the things um, that are costly and take time. And there you are again in a waiting room where you can just do it at home. So I love that about Uva Health. And it's also all in real time. I think that's so critical as well, because when you're on your fertility journey, every single day matters. So if you have to wait 6, 12, 24 hours to get your results back, it might be too late. And it can yeah. lost some busy clinics shuffle too. Like yeah. I have had many women too say, I never heard from, I never heard from them where that's days lapse. Like 
even one day of a low progesterone can be significant to the outcome of a pregnancy. So you are absolutely right with that. Yeah, so you get your results in seconds and at the convenience of your home, not invasively, um, and then a fraction of the cost of the lab test. Amazing. Now share a little bit about how this can be beneficial to healthcare providers and their office. Oh my goodness. I mean, so this is really shocking to me because this was like kind of a dream like reach goal for us, right? Like hopefully we can have clinicians trust our results because I mean, I knew they would trust like because we kind of didn't follow clinicians from the get-go, but I was like, maybe they'll be able to use it and take the next step because so many clinicians when they have a fertility patient walk in, that woman has already tracked so many things and the clinician will just kind of flip through that data, put it to the side and be like, all right, we're going to move on with our protocol. I didn't want them to do that with Puba. So um, when the pandemic hit, that actually opened up a huge opportunity for us because fertility clinics were being forced to shut down. And you had all these couples and families that were being put on hold indefinitely until things would open up again. So clinicians actually started reaching out to us to see if they could use our platform to do remote hormone monitoring. And I was like, oh, well, that's a great idea. Okay, let's try it out. And we put together this like, compliance dashboard and got our first clinic on board. They loved it. I mean, the way that I mean, if every clinician type that we have is using it differently. But like, for example, if you look at an IVF clinic, many of them are now using supplement natural cycles, time uh, retrievals, supplementing IVF and IUI cycles. So you don't have to go in for the daily blood drops. You only have to go in on days to get a procedure done. And a really interesting one that we recently had was um, a surrogacy because the surrogate was across state lines. And believe it or not, they were still faxing me results to from the labs. So we've really helped with that. Uh, but it's been used in so many ways now. And it's just because it's such a game changer, right? You're not having pa- your waiting room full of patients that just need to get their blood drawn. You can now focus on the procedures and not the routine workups. You no longer have to do sample management. You no longer have to deal with making your labeling is correct and keeping additional headcount. Like it's just a really great time saving and cost saving for the clinic. Um, the other great thing is that you're getting such useful data that you probably would be able to get outside of Uba. We are providing you with LH and progesterone measurements every day for 15 days of the woman cycle, whether she's medicated or not. So that type of data just doesn't exist. And we provide trend analysis, um, you know, AI recommendations that you can push over to your patient. There's a lot that we kind of layered on the dashboard. Um, so it's become a really good resource for our providers. And just to get a little bit more confidence in it, we're over 85 clinics across the country and that's growing daily. Amazing. That is so great. If you are a healthcare provider listening, I'm going to share Amy's email with you. She is so personable and walks you through everything and can share how this works for you as a healthcare provider, but most importantly, answer any questions you have. So look for that in today's show notes. We'll also include in today's show notes a link for you if you are a patient wanting to learn more. But Amy, where else can people find you if they're looking to learn more about Ova Health? You can head over to our website, www.oova.life, L-I-F-E. Um, or you can feel free to send me an email, amy at uva.life. Um, we're really accessible. You can also send us a DM on social at Uva Life. Um, we're all over the place. Thank you so much, Amy, for being with us and for this amazing service that you offer. I always say that sometimes it's a healing process for us to turn our hurt into hope for others. And I feel you've done that with this company. Thank you. Uh, That means a lot. It's hard, right, to do a startup and try to build something from scratch. But the best emails I get are women asking me to cancel their subscription because they got a positive things test. Thank you again, Amy. Thank you for listening. We'll see you back here next week, Tuesday. If you enjoyed today's show, please head over and hit subscribe or leave a review for Hopeful Hints and Infertility Podcast. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you back here next week, Tuesday.